Welcome back. Time now for a check of weather with USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey. Brad, when we talk about this summer, some parts of the country had one of the wettest Julys on record, some in the top 10. But boy, as we switch to August, that storyline flipped. Now we're talking about some of the driest on record for the month of August for some areas of the country, Brad. Last time we talked, Ty, and we were talking about how wet just about everybody east of the Rockies had been in May, June, and July. The taps turned off for some areas in September. We'll get to that in a minute. But I will tell you from where I'm talking to you in Washington, D.C., we're shaping up to have our driest August on record with only two tenths of an inch of rain. Some of that dryness extending westward into parts of the southern and eastern Corn Belt. Well, let's go ahead and get to those maps, Brad. Where are the parts of the country right now that we're talking about where the dryness is the biggest concern here in August? So looking at the August percent of normal precipitation map, you can see the area to really focus on is from the Mid-South and the Lower Midwest into the Northeast. Of course, agriculturally, all eyes are on the Northern Mississippi Delta into the Ohio Valley and the Southern Corn Belt. A lot of those areas receiving less than half of normal rainfall during the month of August, a few areas less than 25% of normal. And with those taps turning off, that is depleted topsoil moisture. We're gonna have to wait and see with crop production in September to see how the crops have handled this late dryness. One thing I will point out though is that temperatures have mostly stayed down. So at least a little bit of optimism in the overall outlook is the fact we haven't had extreme heat with this dryness. Wow, Brad, it is crazy to see some of those areas that were so wet this spring and summer to see just how dry it has turned lately. All right, so how now is that impacting the drought monitor? Yes, yeah, so the latest drought monitor, and I was the author this week, so I was pretty close and personal to some of these lines that I was drawing. We're seeing rapid expansion, flash drought across the Mid-South, Lower Midwest into the Northeast. All of this drought has come on in just the last few weeks. A few, as you mentioned, at the end of July, we were virtually drought free in the Midwest. So to see these uh, yellows and tans starting to light up, that is reflective of the overall dryness. Of course, a different story in the West where we've got drought really deeply entrenched. But from the big picture here, a lot of focus on those developing, developing drought areas from the Mid-South into the Northeast. Yeah, looking ahead now, I think the four week change in the drought monitor showing those humongous changes in the drought coverage that we have seen since the beginning of August. Again, focus on that northern Mississippi Delta area. There are a lot of soybeans in that area. That's one crop that could be very sensitive to this late summer dryness. Now, as we look ahead into the autumn months, which will take us obviously through harvest and beyond, we have about a 60% chance of La Nina formation. A La Nina watch was issued by the National Weather Service in mid-August, and the National Weather Service forecasts reflect that likelihood of La Nina development. In a nutshell, what that means for the United States is developing dryness across the south central United States, eventually expanding across the south, wetter and cooler as you move to the north for the autumn and into the winter months. But then looking at the National Weather Service probabilities of La Nina formation, you can see that by the end of the year, you get to October, November, December, almost a 60% chance of La Nina development. If that materializes, that would reflect the fifth time in the last six winters that we have seen La Nina or La Nina-like conditions across the United States. That has been obviously a chronic issue for livestock with drought, across the Great Plains, the South and the Western United States. So all eyes are on whether we actually move back into La Nina conditions toward the end of 2025 and into next year. USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey. Thanks, Brad. Well, with the dryness, is the U.S. crop actually getting smaller? We'll talk about it in roundtables next with Dan Bossie and Jim McCormick.